Hi, good morning, my friends. Today I was watching, actually I was reading the iNews, the Guyana iNews newspaper online, and there was a story that says, the commissioner of police went to Ithaca, that is in West Bobese, and he told the youths there not to be influenced by wrongdoing, not to be influenced by to do wrong things. Which reminds me of um, Nancy Reagan who said, say no to drugs, just say no to drugs. No, it was Bush. Oh yes, it was jo uh, Herbert Bush's wife who says, it's Herbert Bush or Reagan, one of those two presidents' wives, who said, just say no to drugs. I think it was, it was um, Nancy Reagan, yeah, I think it was her. Now, how simplistic is uh, advice that is? When a person is hooked on drugs, that person would have been influenced from either his relative, a friend, a sibling, someone at school, or one of his peers or her peers, and uh, he start, or she may have started it as an experimental thing and encouraged by his peers or friends or whoever it was to continue doing so. And before you know it, that individual got hooked and getting hooked on drugs or any opiate or substance, be it alcohol or whatever, varies some individual to individual. It depends on your own meta metabolism. Some people are prone to become addicted to anything. Some people are not that way inclined. So um, to tell young people in Burbis, just say no to wrongdoing is a very simplistic view. I think parents and by and large parents, guardians and those who are in charge of children at a young age are by and large responsible for how those children behave for the views that they hold or develop or cultivate over a period of time because children listen and emulate what the elders do or say. I repeat, children look up to older brothers and sisters or adults in the area whether it's at home or in the environment or at school etc. They look up to those persons as influence figures, as people who they can listen to, take advice from, and even follow, or ape. That is how children learn to become adults be, and to be responsible or irresponsible adults because they are influenced by those around them. Whether they have parents or gardens, one parent or two or none at all, or never had parents, but they were moving from place to place, all those individuals that they dealt with had some part to play, made some impact on their lives that made them what they became. Because you cultivate things as you incorporate beliefs and ideas and things you see and feel personally, those things become a part of your per individual persona. So a child is inclined to do wrong things dependent on the influences around him or her and the encouragement he or she may get to do so. And children rely a lot on their brothers and sisters or their peers to be to feel to identify with, to feel love, to feel to be a part of the group. Every child wants to be like his friend who he likes or bro or sister. They want to be accepted as one of a, as an equal. That's why it hurts a kid when he or she cannot have a pair of sneakers or shoes that his friends have. But it's if his or her own is cheaper. He feels somewhat inferior to his friends because his friends will let him know that, oh, you're wearing a cheap shoe or a cheap trousers or a cheap cap and mine is better. My mom bought me a better one. I experienced this as a child too where some of my friends wore watches and I never had one. I can recall attending a Christmas party at the school at the end of the year where we had a Christmas party at school where we had to sub subscribe as individuals when you bring some sugar flour milk whatever we were asked by the teacher to bring something to help in the preparation of the of the of the um, treats for the party right so we brought flour the children brought what their parents can afford to give and my mom told me she could not afford to give me anything to bring to the school not even money so i went back and i told my yeah, and she, because she doesn't have a money tree. So I went back and I told my teacher exactly what my mom said. I said my mom told me to tell my teacher that she does not have a money tree. And my teacher told me, she said, uh, Mr. Griffith, you go back and tell your mom that the other children in class, their mothers or parents don't have money trees either. But they were able to bring something towards 
the preparation of, of the party. Yeah, it was a shame, but um, I still went because my friends were there and I was a kid and I know kids, our reasoning is different from adults. I wanted to be with my friends regardless. I did, I did not even have a good pair of shoes to wear. I had, had one of those, those rubber slippers, those, things, those slip-ons. You push your, your, your toes are exposed, yes. We call those Jesus boots when I was a kid. Those slippers, rubber slippers. I wore that to the party. You know? My friends giggled, but I didn't give a damn. I wanted to be at a party. And that's what I wore. Well, it just shows you how some adults totally misconstrue. Or they forget that they were once kids. They've forgotten that they were once children and they were influenced and behaved in similar fashion. I had friends who did marijuana, who smoked marijuana. I hung out with friends when I was a teenager or adolescent. We went partying on weekends. We went all around the city. We rode bicycles together and we hung out and drank beer. So most of them smoked marijuana. I never did. Most of them have experimented with other drugs. Drugs I heard like bells, angel dust and all those things I never knew. But I heard them talking about it. But I never once tried it because I was always scared. You know why? Because my mom always threatened me. She said, the day I hear, I hear you indulging or engaging in any of those things, you will be thrown out of this house. And that warning drove fear into my butt. So I never had the inclination to try it because I had that... I remember what she said and I know she would she would have done it because she was that way and I had nowhere else to go so I would not do anything to cause that situation to arise so my friends and I saw how they walk in dreamy fashion their eyes were dreamy and sleepy when they were under the influence and I could not figure what they found in this thing when I got older around 18 19 20 I, I had a friend who did it and he said take a puff and try say so try I took one puff and I coughed like crap. Then he told me how to inhale it. If I go to, if I pull it too quickly, it will it will cause me to cough up and things like this. So he taught me how to do it. And still, even though I did it exactly as he said, I still could not find the pleasure in it. It made me cough a lot, and I did get high. I got a bit lightheaded, and it wore off a while. But if I got to be coughing like a dog. To get a little high after and I said this is not for me so when I tried cigarettes and I did not get those type of um, responses from it I said well I'll settle for cigarettes so I used to smoke cigarettes not that I was addicted because I knew that I was not addicted I just did it because my friends did it and I wanted to be you know a part of the group they smoked so we all smoke and we felt like you know we're young men and we're doing what young men do you know, when you're a kid, you have these weird ideas about what it is to be manly, what it is to be a young man, to be within, to be with, you know, with the in crowd. So I smoked. So in 1994, when I came, when I was in America, I was told that Mr. Griffith, after I saw my doctor, he told me, he, got an ex, he did an x-ray of my lung, etc. He asked if I smoked and so on and so forth. I said, I, I smoked for years back in Guyana since I was a, a youngster kid. So he took an x-ray of my lung and he said, Mr. Griffith, your, young, your lung is, is dark. All right, have you been smoking? Said, yes, I've been smoking for years. He said, well, I suggest you stop immediately. If you want to, if you, if you, or because if you continue in this fashion, you may develop cancer because your, your, your lung is very dark. So in 1994, I instantly stopped smoking. I had a pack of cigarettes still on me and I put it, on the table next to my bed and it was there sitting for over three months. I never touched that. Why I did so? Because I wanted it to be there to tempt me to, to interfere with it. And I was never tempted. I said, I, I'm going to stop now and I did. And I never was ever tempted to do it again. And that is what I, why I knew I was not addicted. Because when you're addicted, you do not stop the habit instantly. No, no, no addict, whether a drug addiction or whatever substance user, you do not stop instantly if you're addicted. It goes, you go through a process of what they call cold turkey. Some people take medication to help them resist the temptation to do it. But when I decided to stop and I was able to do it and stop instantly without any effect, then I realized I was never addicted at all. I just did it because of habit. I just did it because of habit. 
like wearing a favorite shoe or a favorite shirt. You know, you like this shoe, you like the shirt a lot, and you wear it a lot. So coming back to the point where the commissioner was telling the youth that you must say no to wrongdoing, it's not a very sensible piece of advice. I would not tell youths to say no to drugs or no to wrong. I say, listen, I will show them the pros and cons of doing X and Y thing, or the pros and cons of doing X and Y or engaging in X and Y activity. I will also tell them when I was a kid like them, I was exposed and I did a lot of stuff too like them, encouraged to do other stuff, and I showed them what I did and why I did it. Because they must know and realize I too had those experiences, I too had that exposure, and how I dealt with it. Kids want to know how you deal with it. They may not ask you, but they would like to know how you deal with it if you said you were exposed or you did it. How did you cope? So you must give them that type of a background so they will get an understanding of how it affected you as a kid. And why are you giving them this advice? You can only convince kids if you can show them by your own experience why you did, why you saying what you said, and why you feel what you're saying is correct or ought to be listened to. So that is my point. Don't just tell people say no to drugs or don't hang with the wrong crowd. That is ridiculous advice. Children would not listen to that. Those are you talking nonsense. Children are curious animals. Like all young, young people growing up, you're curious. You want to know things. You want to know what is what. And you'll do things even though you were told it's wrong to do it. That's why you must show them the pros and cons. It is your obligation to show children the pros and cons of things. And let them make the choice. Let them make the choice based on the information that they've gotten. The positive and negative side. That is what is called informed decisions. They get information and now they can make a decision based on the information they've got. Wrong or right, incorrect or correct or incorrectly, they will have to make a decision for themselves. And when that decision is taken, they must be prepared to face the repercussions, which you will also tell them results in any decision you make, positive or negative. Every decision has repercussions. But it is always best to make a decision than not to make any at all. Because you don't make a decision and the, problem sits, and the problem continues. It is not solved. It proliferates. It gets worse. So taking a decision for or against it will determine whether the problem will continue unabated or it will, it will be curtailed or be impaired or hampered in some way in developing further. So this is my point on this question of um, telling young people not to do or engage in wrongdoing, coming from a commission of police, is not a wise piece of advice. I think it's too simplistic to be considered helpful. This is all for now. Bye.